Now we're faced with a dilemma where we want to get the, say, the, the time, the date time, and we want to get the temperature, but we need it for all 24 hours of the day. Well, we know that the first entry in the list is the first hour that it recorded the, the weather. If we were to copy this and duplicate it down here and just change this to a 1, we run this, we'll get the date and the temperature, and that's to be expected because we go to history, observations, and there's a list, and in the list there's a bunch of recordings for each date. So here's the first date, here's the second, and you know uh, the list started zero in Python. So we could do this, and we could do it again and again and again and just change the numbers from 0 all the way up to 23 which would give us 24 total and we would actually get all of the readings and we would actually get all the dates and everything but that's a lot of work and for large lists maybe there's thousands you could never do that it would be too much so if only there were a way for us to loop over this over and over again and have it just give us all the info without having to manually type, you know, to iterate manually over the list. We don't want to do that. Well, there's a solution. It's called a for loop, okay? And so in Python, you do for item in, and then you put your list in there, okay? So it's kind of like for each item in the list. And our list is this right here. And we know that because the list is always referenced with an index. And so the list, this is like the list here. It starts here and each item is, you know, list item zero, list item one, list item two. So we can put this up here and for loops, you start it, it's always formatted like this, for item in R, whatever it is, with this part being your actual list. And then a colon. Okay, and that begins the for loop. And when we return to the next line, it automatically indents over. And everything that we do under this that's tabbed in will be executed under this for loop. And that means that it will do whatever we say here once for each item in the list. So this will automatically run 24 times because there happens to be 24 you know, entries in the list. So imagine that this item becomes this, okay? So actually becomes the list index zero, and then the second time it runs, it becomes the list index one. So Python is adding this to the end of this for us automatically, and it's it knows how many items are in the list, so it does it the exact amount of times. So we can then treat this item as the actual list with the index already attached. So if I do print item, and so this item now represents this, and the next time it runs, it'll represent this. So all we have to do is say, okay, what's left over? All right, so we've got the date, and then we've got a print item, and this one is what, tem? Okay, so I hope this makes sense. Essentially what we're doing is we're telling uh, Python to take this piece, okay, and make item equal to that. And then all we have to do is print item, which is subbed in for that, and the rest of it, okay? And what this will do is it will run through the list for however many items are in the list and give us back the particular data that we're looking for. So this is a very powerful trick and it allows us to simplify our code. And at this point, if we were to run this, there you have it. Every single date, time, and every single temperature with just a few lines of code. So this is really, really powerful here. Uh, we've in what is this, like maybe six lines of code, uh, we've connected to an API and we've pulled an entire day's worth of information. And this could be ran, you could change 
the date, you could change the city, run it again, and boom, you'll instantly get the information for the city or the date that you're interested in. So now that we've been able to print out a loop and get the data that we want, we're going to figure out how to save that to a file and then open that somewhere else for further review.